There's a joke that's been going around for some time now, something along the lines that I popped down to Aldi or Lidl to buy a pint of milk and I came back with a plasma cutter. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> So yes, while I was out shopping with the wife, literally, I just had an impulse buy and bought the Parkside Plasma Cutter. Now, if you've been watching the channel for some time, you would know that I've got some things in the garden to cut up, like this great big diesel tank, which I've tried cutting with a disc cutter, but really it's just too big to cut with a disc cutter. And if I did manage to do it, I'd get through so many blades, it would be unbelievable. So I knew that I wanted a plasma cutter, because that's what cuts metal. But I don't know any details about it. And when I got a message from one of my patrons saying it's back in Lidl's, I thought, right, next time we go shopping, I'll pick one up. Now, unusually, I normally do quite a lot of research before I buy any of my tools. This time, I just didn't. I just went and bought this while we were out. And I've just discovered something, which I must admit I didn't realise, and it's quite important. It actually says, can only be used with a compressor. Compressor not included. But I don't own a compressor. So let's start again. I bought a plasma cutter from Lidl's Parkside which cost £150 plus or minus a couple of pennies. So I can cut through metal. I need to get through this tank and I want to do more metal work generally in the future as well. But it needs a compressor, but that's okay because I now own a compressor. Well, I have done for the last half an hour anyway. So I think any compressor will do, but I've got something that's hopefully going to be big enough to also do my other work that I need to. So let's just focus on a plasma cutter. As I understand it, a plasma cutter uses a jet of plasma blown out of this machine to be able to cut through steel, copper, aluminium, and anything else I can get my hands on. From what I understand, it's a little bit like using oxyacetylene but without the gas and all the aggravation. And this is probably one of the cheapest you can possibly get. It's a sort of UK version of Harbour Freight plasma cutter. So I've got a load of safety gear and some other stuff for the compressor. We won't talk about that this week. I'll have a look at that in another time. So let's take this out of the box and see what we get. The first thing that strikes me about this tool, even before I pull it out of the box, is that it's light and it's small. I'm not sure why, but I thought plasma cutters would be bigger and heavier. And at this point, it doesn't really feel like this half-empty box is going to have much clout against steel. It's got a number of connections that I don't recognise in the back of it, and an air pressure gauge and adjustment on the front of the box. And, as is traditional, a fairly short power cable. The other key component to this tool is the cutting torch thing, the bit you hold and cut with. Unlike the main unit, it feels quite solid, heavy and professional, and obviously connects the cutter to the main unit with more than one supply. Woohoo! Well, that looks dangerous, doesn't it? So unusually for me, because I've done absolutely no research, I'm seeing all kinds of things which I have no clue what they are. Normally at this point, I'll be understanding exactly what's in the box because I would have seen a load of videos, but this is a really strange situation to be in because it's the first time I'm seeing any of this. So before I do anything, I really think I need a good read of the instructions. So the first thing the instruction manual emphasises is obviously safety. And this is where it starts worrying me a little bit because there's a risk of electric shock, there's danger from smoke emissions, danger from flying sparks, danger from electromagnetic fields, and danger from arc beams, whatever that is. It then has three or four pages of what clothes to wear, which I think I'm generally covered because I've just bought some new welding type gauntlets and I'll just cover myself up. And any cutting I'm going to do today is going to be outside. So at least I'm in a well-ventilated area. 
And regarding plasma, it says that plasma cutters are operated by pushing pressurized gas through a small pipe. In the center of the pipe, there's a negatively charged electrode and a vortex ring, which causes plasma to rotate quickly. And when the tip of the nozzle is held against metal, the connection causes a closed electrical circuit, forcing a powerful spark between the electrode and the metal. And with the gas that's flowing through the pipe, the spark heats up the gas until it reaches plasma condition. That's apparently with a temperature of over 16,000 degrees C and whatever metal is in front of it turns into steam and a molten discharge. At this point, I just moved on to the next page because the whole thing just seemed a little bit too worrying. So, right, after reading all of that, I think I understand this unit a lot better. Firstly, the pipe that supplies compressed air to the unit is this really thin plastic pipe. I was going to say quarter of an inch, but it's probably even smaller than that. It's probably internally, maybe sort of four millimetres. So it can't need that much air. But the problem is it's got a fitting on the end that doesn't fit any of my standard quick fit fittings. It's just too big to go in. But you would have seen me just now change that for a standard quick fit uh, fitting in there. So hopefully that should work. I just have to make sure that I've got the right pressure coming through. I haven't even opened the compressor yet. We'll do that in a minute. Now, the, the dangerous end is this really quite nasty looking uh, nozzle thing. And the other thing I've just worked out is that apparently as you cut, this nozzle can wear down. So what we can do when it does wear, and it says that you need to replace it once it's worn one and a half millimeters. It has this sort of shield thing that you can undo. And this is the actual nozzle that wears down. So apparently when that wears down by about one and a half millimeters, you need to replace it. And that unscrews apparently, although I can't get it out at the moment. So that's what the extra nozzles are for. And I think the unit comes with a two extra nozzles and two shields. And I bought another maybe eight here with shields as well. So with that in place, that just gets screwed on there. And now we're ready to go. Uh, the only last thing I need to do before I cut the tank is to earth it with this thing that's connected to the back of the machine, just so I get a proper connection. So if I can sort the compressor out, get some air to it at the right pressure, then turn this on and give it a go. And I think this is one of these occasions where you really do need to take PPE seriously. The manual really stresses the various risks. So I'm glad I've got a proper set of gauntlets and I've got a face mask and I'm doing it outside as well. So let's see if I can sort all that out and give it a go. It doesn't seem quite right for these two machines that the first outing is out in my muddy garden, but I put down a board just to try to keep things clean. What is good is that although all these connections that looked daunting to me 10 minutes ago, there's only one way to connect everything together. So to be honest, even without the instruction manual, you could easily rig this up correctly. I hook up the unit to the tank I'm about to cut, hoping to get a good connection through the paint via this fitting. And with the compressor fired up, I think I'm ready for my first try. And before anyone comments, this diesel tank has long since seen any diesel. It's been in the garden, rusting and being rained on for the last 30 years. So absolutely no chance of anything combusting while I try to cut it up. At this point, I'm not sure how bright the cutting flame will be. So I just use a face mask and some tinted safety glasses. Although the cutter seems to be arcing with the metal, it's not penetrating through and feels very weak. So after a quick read of the instructions, I increase the air pressure through the unit and give it another go. This time I actually cut all the way through, 
although it's still struggling and very slow. That is interesting. I mean, it's working, but it's really slow going. I think this steel is thicker than really the machine is designed for. I can get through it, but in some areas I'm having to go back a few times because it misses bits and it is really slow going. So to cut this up is going to take a bit of time. Or well, maybe I just need some practice. After another 10 minutes of playing around with it, I realised that there's another adjustment on the back of the unit. So I turned this up and switched to my welding mask for extra protection to see if that makes a difference. It immediately made a difference and the cutter became a lot stronger and it meant I could also increase the cutting speed. However, after just a minute or two at this setting, Everything went off and I discovered that my extension cable thermal cutout had tripped. So while I wait for that to reset itself, I thought I'd try some other materials back in the workshop. Firstly, a thin piece of aluminium, although it cuts through quickly, leaves a really messy edge to the cut. So I tried it again using the help of a straight edge, which didn't actually help that much, to be honest. I also tried to cut a circle freehand, which was more difficult than I thought. I then moved on to a piece of steel angle, which is obviously more difficult to cut than the aluminium. Although it did manage to get through by essentially melting the steel and once again leaves a really rough edge to the cut. So that's my first try out at the Parkside Plasma Cutter. And what do I think of it? Well, it definitely cuts. It cuts by melting steel and aluminium, which is, I suppose, what, how you'd imagine it cutting. But what I found was I couldn't really cut things accurately. It just sort of melts globules of aluminium or steel. And I got the feeling that I was hoping to be able to cut a sign in metal but at the moment, maybe it's just that I need some more practice, but at the moment it would look like a sort of six-year-old has done it. So um, maybe I need to adjust some of the settings on this. It must pull quite a lot of electricity uh, because I stopped cutting outside because uh, the thermal cutout on my extension lead. And I don't know how much electricity it costs. It might be cheaper just by paying for discs in a disc cutter. And, you know, this is like three millimetre steel, two millimetre steel. It cut through this OK, but it hasn't left a clean edge at all. It's like being cut like a mini lightsaber. So I think maybe lots of practice needed by me and maybe I just need to get used to it and uh, spend a day playing around with it. What I would say is definitely, definitely you need to use a welding mask rather than just sort of normal eye protection. To cut accurately, you need to see that plasma flame, that cutting flame quite well. And the only way you're gonna do that is by using a welding mask. 
I think I need some more practice on this. I need to adjust the settings both on the compressor and this power setting at the back and maybe use it on different materials and get through that learning curve that you always have whenever you pick up a new tool. And maybe in a few weeks time, I'll be able to do things with it that I can't at the moment. At the moment it's cutting, but in a really rough way. So if you go into Lidl's for a pint of milk, at least if you see this, you know what you're in for if you're tempted to pick one up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.